In a previous video, we showed you how to create a bot, but we left out how to create a custom component. Custom components allow your bot to communicate with back-end systems, such as an inventory system. Suppose the bot from the previous video takes an order for five small green t-shirts. You want to confirm that you have the order in stock, and if so, return an order number to the customer. If you're out of stock for that t-shirt size and color, then you want to return a back order number. Custom components are implemented by an API that the bot can call. We won't go too deep into the process of creating an API. We'll only focus on the endpoints that are required for a custom component. So let's get started. Create an API in Oracle Mobile Cloud and call it T-Shirt Order Taker. Make a copy of the API's URL for use later. Create two endpoints, a get and a post. The get endpoint must be components, and the post endpoint must be components slash component name. Don't forget the brackets. The bot's UI calls the get endpoint at design time to discover the component's parameters and its possible responses. In the post definition, click Add Media Type and make sure that it's set to Application JSON. Go to the security page and turn off the Login Required switch. Now create the backend for the API. Think of the backend as a kind of web server. It handles the communication between the API and clients such as your bot. Copy both the backend ID and the anonymous key. You'll need these when setting up the bot to call the API. To finish the setup, add the t-shirt order taker API that you created earlier to the backend. Before you start coding, download a few artifacts. First, get the implementation scaffold from the API. Click Implementation, then click JavaScript Scaffold. Extract it to a convenient location on your hard drive. Some files that come with a scaffold are not needed for this project, so go ahead and delete them now. They are README, Samples, Swagger, Tools Config, and the RAML file. You'll also need the bot's SDK. Download it from OTN. This is the 17.4.3 SDK, which is the latest version at the time that this video was made. Open the SDK and copy the registry, SDK, and shell JavaScript files to your implementation directory. Now we can start coding. Create the file orderNumber.js, which is where you'll put the code for the custom component. The metadata function is called when a GET request comes in. The bot UI needs this information at design time. The invoke function is called whenever a post to the component name endpoint comes in. Normally, this is where you'd make calls out to your inventory system or other services to get the order number and availability. But for now, we'll just return a random number. We'll also do some trickery to allow for testing of the dialog flow. We'll set the next state depending on the value of the prefix in the bot's dialog flow. You'll see how that works later when we modify the dialog flow. Next, add order number to the registry by opening registry.js and adding order number to the list of components. You'll see shortly why it's needed and how it fits into the overall system. One of the files that came with the scaffold is tshirtordertaker.js. It has the code that handles the processing of the get and post endpoints. Right now it has boilerplate, so we'll make it a bit more useful. Replace the boilerplate with the following code. We need to import shell.js because we hand off the get and post request to it. Before we continue, let's take a look at shell.js. It imports the registry. And its get all component metadata function uses the registry to find all the custom components, retrieve their metadata, and respond to the get request that's sent by the bot UI at design time. The last file to modify is package.json. Open it up and add a dependency for Joy, which is a library that the SDK uses to validate the body of the post request that the bot supplies to your custom component. With that done, open a command window, change to the directory that contains your code, and run npm install. This resolves the Joy dependency. Zip up the t-shirt order taker folder. The zip file is the implementation package that you upload in the next step. Go back to OMCE and open the t-shirt order taker API. Click implementation and then upload the package. After the package is finished uploading, the backend is ready to take calls from the bot and pass them to the API. Now go to the bot's UI to add the custom component to the bot. Click the components icon, then use service. Use t-shirts for the name and select use anonymous access. 
paste in the backend ID and anonymous key that you copied earlier from the backend settings page. Also paste in the metadata URL that you copied when creating the API and add slash components to the URL. When you click Create, the bots UI issues a GET request to the components endpoint in your API, which returns the properties and supported actions information. Now it's time to update your bots dialog flow definition to incorporate the order number component. In the context section, add the order number variable of type string. And next add the states that will handle the order number process. The bot needs to display a message that the order is being processed and set an initial value for the order number variable. Remember the trickery in order number.js? Well, here's where it's used. If the prefix in get order number is ts, the API returns in stock. However, if the prefix is anything but ts, the API returns back order. This allows you to test the dialog flow to make sure it works as expected. And that's it. Test the bot with the prefix ts and some other prefix, ts1 for example. To learn more, visit us online at cloud.oracle.com.